NASA scrubbed the launch this morning, the debut launch of its new rocket, due to an engine issue with the flight postponed until at least Friday. We're joined now by Joe Poist, Science Applications International Corporation Vice President, SAIC. Vice President of Civil Space, National Security and Space Sector. You just got back, Joe, from Cape Canaveral yesterday, I understand, so you weren't there to share the disappointment. But can I just ask in the outset here, the fact that this rocket, the biggest rocket NASA, the most powerful rocket NASA has ever made, being made with reused parts from the shuttle program, does that have anything to do with it today? No, I, I don't believe so. I, I think you know, as, as they go through this, uh, you know, anytime you build something new, there's, yeah. al there's always going to be hurdles and challenges, mm -hmm. and, and they're working through that, and they'll, they'll figure out what the anomaly is, and, and they'll move forward. This is obviously a major uh, undertaking and a big deal for our government. We haven't sent anyone to the moon in the better part of 50 years. If you can just walk through uh, what we're going to see in the next couple of years here, I know it's been long in coming. This is. This is an operation and a program that has been somewhat challenged by the calendar. But once this test flight takes place, this will bring an unmanned uh, mission around the moon. What happens after that? So the uh, you know, Artemis II is designed to take you know, humans you know, mm -hmm. uh, are in, in the loop, to take them in that same... When do we uh, see boots on the moon? So hopefully in, in the next four years or five years, you know, I mean, that's the whole ultimate goal. I mean, this is a NASA decision, right? This is not, not, a, not a my decision in, <laughs> in any of this. And uh, so, so that, that's the ultimate goal, right, is for us to advance that. There have been a lot of uh, questions about why go back to the moon. E even going back to the cancellation of the Constellation program during the Obama administration, they say, look, we've been there already. Isn't it time to go to Mars? That's what Elon Musk says. But is going back to the moon part of getting back to Mars? Absolutely. You, 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 yeah, that is the leap pad to, to take us beyond. Because that would be a base of some sort, or, or we'll learn more by going to the moon? We will learn more about going to the moon, as well as having an outpost. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just like the, the lunar gateway that'll take when you go from the lunar gateway down to the moon uh, you know, and, and back up. And it's, it's creating that environment that we'll need to go to Mars and beyond. So if you're, if you're thinking of it as a connecting flight, sort of, the first stop's going to be the moon. Yes. Is that going to be a government mission when that happens, or is that a, a public-private partnership, or can we not see that far ahead? I'm not sure if you can see that far ahead, but you know, as we continue to press the boundaries, yeah. Yeah, I think there's always going to be some shared responsibility in there or shared uh, partnerships. It takes all of us to get there. Industry must be there. You know, SAIC is there on the forefront, mm -hmm. and, and we are there to help NASA achieve that mission. NASA will always drive the requirements and drive the mission. We're there to help enable that. Will it always drive it? And I, I ask you that because we've been watching Elon Musk put rockets in space, land them back on their feet uh, to the point where it's become routine. Why does NASA need to be launching rockets at this point? So as you, speaking of in the terms of going deeper into space, okay. and, and as, they, as NASA went to commercialize the low Earth orbit, uh, launch capacity. And as we get there, I, I think the ultimate goal probably would be to commercialize more and more. The more that we can do, NASA will do the one of a kind mm -hmm. and continue to press that envelope for that new technology, that new innovation. And as it becomes more standard, more assembly line, then you move into the commercialization. We're, we're looking at our future unfold here on the screen through digital imagery. Uh, but of course, you're an example of that private-public partnership, right? The, whether it's the government or not, companies like SAIC are needed to, to close the deal on these missions. Absolutely. We bring some of the best and brightest people to, to the mission. As, as we go through, as, as you know, we do the safety and mission assurance as well as the independent verification and validation for NASA. And our people are on the ground, integrated with the NASA team, and we are ensuring that the safety is there and ensuring NASA is successful in all aspects of what they're working towards. I've long said that once people see a Chinese flag or a flag from any other nation on the moon, they're going to suddenly care about going back again. Do you feel like people are involved, people are paying attention? Is America behind this? I, I believe so, right? I mean, this is what we've been, you know, since the cancellation of shuttle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there hasn't been that. Not, people are excited about the other commercial launches, but this one is a huge deal because it is, it is not just a launch. It is the springboard to something that is so much better. Yeah. It's so much more of putting those boots, the first woman, the first person of color on the, on the moon. This is exciting. This allows the next generation to be, you know, 
inspired and ready and, and get back engaged and, and have fun.